What's up everybody? This is John Raymond coming to you from the workshop and today we're going to get into a whole bunch of stuff on voice leading. Why you need it, why you need to work on it, and how to actually go about working on it. And while this I think can apply to any musician, any instrumentalist playing any different instrument, I want this to specifically apply to the horn players out there. I sympathize with you all. We play monophonic instruments and for us a lot of times understanding and hearing and working on voice leading is a little bit different than say a pianist or a guitarist or or a, a chordal instrument who can play more than one note. So all the horn players out there, this one's for you. All right, so first let's define what we actually mean by voice leading. Um, one way I think you could think about this would be it's really just the linear progression of notes or voices, right? And this is really crucial for us to understand and to be able to hear because it helps us be able to play through chord changes and not think about playing at them. A lot of times, maybe without realizing it, we tend to boil down harmony to this thing where we're seeing chords as very vertical. This chord happens here, this chord happens here, this chord happens here. And we're not really hearing or understanding the ways in which those chords connect with each other, the progression that's happening. And working on voice leading is going to help you with this. And what does this ultimately do? It helps you be able to hear the chords more strongly so that you can, as you're improvising, play ideas that really sit in the chords well and are going to bring out all of the color of the chords that are happening. So what I'd like to do is walk through a simple three-step process that you can go about on your own in the practice room that'll help you work on voice leading. And we're going to start very simple, just with whole notes and half notes. And I want you to take a tune that you're working on and start on any one of the chord tones that's not the root. So third, fifth, seventh, ninth, eleventh, thirteenth, any of those notes are valid. Right? And what I want you to do is starting on that note using only whole notes and half notes, connect to a note in the next chord as seamlessly as possible. Right? So really you have three options here. You're going to follow your ear and you're either going to go up to a note, you're going to go down to a note, or you're going to stay the same. And for now, on this first sort of step of this process, we're going to start with having to move only diatonically. So no alterations in the chords for now, no chromatic notes, only diatonically, up or down or staying the same going from one chord to another. Okay? I'm going to demonstrate that here playing over the song Lady Bird. And I'm going to start on one of the chord tones and follow this process and see if you can hear through the voices with me where I'm going to be going. So hopefully you noticed, as I was going through these chords, you could almost start to inevitably tell what notes I was going to go to next with the voice leading. That's a good thing. Voice leading on some level should be inevitable, right? You should naturally hear where you're going to go. And if you can start to do that, that means that you're developing a keen awareness to what's going on in the chords themselves and how to hear your way through it. So that's a really good thing. Now, Step two of this process, we're going to do the same kind of thing, but now I'm going to give you the freedom and give myself the freedom to move chromatically. Okay? So this means that alterations to certain chords are now fair game. Right? So if I want to imply a flat nine over a dominant chord, I can do that now, right? for example. So I'm going to play again here over the chords of Lady Bird. 
Now again, moving up or down or staying the same through the chords, but now I can move chromatically. All right, last step, now that we've done these first two things, now let's start to embellish a little bit more on these chord tones, right? You can do this a number of different ways with you know, different enclosures or different notes in and around these voice leading notes, or you can do it with arpeggios or a number of different things, right? The key is, again, to really follow your ear through the chord changes and have the voice leading that you're playing be very clear, very easy to hear, so that you can get from one chord to another. So I'm gonna do the same thing over Ladybird, trying to do just this. Here we go. So these may seem like simple exercises, but it's amazing for me to see when I work with students on this kind of a thing, how much of an immediate impact it has on their improvising. A lot of times you're able to, as I said earlier, start to hear the chords and hear through the chords in a much deeper way, which is gonna allow you to improvise over them more fluidly. And while you certainly could improvise a solo, for example, doing one of these kinds of things, you may choose not to, and that's fine. But having this kind of training and developing this sensation of voice leading for your own playing is gonna do wonders for your improvising. I know it. So thanks again for checking out this video. Um, hope you guys enjoy it, and I hope it's helpful. Leave a comment or a question if you've got one, and of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You'll get a lot more of this kind of thing coming up soon. Thanks so much.